Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Thursday's Theology. My name is Jeff, and I'm your host, and we have Jake joining us once again for this week's uh, Summer with the Saints. And uh, when Jake first told me about this saint, I had to ask him to slow down to pronounce it. So, Jake, go with me one more time. Slowly say it. Blessed. Blessed. Pierre. Pierre. Giorgio. Giorgio. Versati. Versati. Yes. Okay. Tell us about him. Okay. So, he, like Therese, died at 24. Okay. So, there's actually this... I don't know if it's, like, known, but it's known to me of the 24 Club, which are... I know of at least four saints who've died at 24. But he's one of them, and he is extremely popular in the church right now, especially just among young people, because he's extremely charismatic, and there's lots of photographs of him, because he died in 1925. Okay. Um, Italian man. And he... Something about him just draws you in, and he's just so extremely joyful. Hmm. But he he was born, actually, to the Italian uh, aristocracy. His father was an agnostic socialist who ran a newspaper, uh, and his mother was a painter. And I don't know if he was... I forget if he was the only one in the family, but he was just incredibly pious, even as a child. Hmm. He would spend entire nights in adoration of the Eucharist and would also, and if he wasn't doing that, he was out hanging out with the poor and the homeless. Mm. And his family would ask, like, where, where is he? What has he been doing? And the pastor would say, oh, he's just been in prayer all night. Mm. And he, what, what my friend told me, because she was blessed enough to visit his house in Turin where he lived, was he would have, he would get up very, very early every morning, climb a mountain to go celebrate mass. Um, he himself wasn't a priest. He was just a layman. Mm-hmm. Um, he actually became a third order Dominican later. Um, but he had to do it so early in the morning, climb up a mountain and then get back before his family woke up. So you can only imagine how arduous that was, but he was just so dedicated to, uh, l- living out the, the charitable works of Christ. Pope John Paul II called him the man of the eight Beatitudes mm. of just constantly giving himself he there's stories of him he would he would be out in a bar playing hanging out with friends and he would challenge someone to a game of pool and the bet was if he won they had to go to mass with him and he was really good at pool <laughs> so, so he, it wasn't it wasn't like any like drinking game it wasn't any, like, no, betting. no it was just like if i win you're coming to church with me yep that was exactly <laughs> what it was that's awesome but he was and a lot of people rate him because it's just especially within this modern culture of a lot of what people today struggle with of Struck, uh, being a student, you know, all these things. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, when he died, actually, he died rather suddenly of poliomyelitis, which they think he got from hanging out with um, the homeless and the poor. Mm-hmm. But the story is when he died, his family was expecting the Italian aristocracy to show up and mourn with them. But they say 10,000 homeless and poor people came. Dang. And his family had no idea that he had been doing this, and they huh. were shocked. Huh. They were absolutely shocked. So, yeah. But he, he's very, he's very, as I said, very big and influential for younger people today to see. Yeah, you're called to live out your faith right now, yeah. not when you're old. But look at this young, handsome man, mountaineer. There's a very famous photo of him actually of him climbing a. Well, he's, he's in the middle of climbing a mountain, but he's got a pipe in his mouth and a. <laughs> Hiking, <laughs> hiking stick in another. But this guy he, sounds awesome. By he, the way, <laughs> he is he's an absolutely incredible. Um, one of my friends is absolutely in love with him, which is I find hilarious. But yeah, <laughs> nice. Okay, so he he was twenty four when he died, mm-hmm. and I think I think that's an important point to to point out because same with Therese of Lisieux. Yeah, you really don't know how long you have. You really don't. You know, and I think something you pointed out just just uh, before this was the fact that he like live out your faith now yeah. not when you're older and i think that is one of the biggest misconceptions young people have about Absolutely. you know living for the lord where it's just Absolutely. like oh you know once i graduate college once i get into once i get married once i move into a house then i can right. really serve the lord but right. but you know being called in your place no matter what your age is, mm-hmm. you know, I think that's a really, really important point because yeah. we can, we can look at that and say like, oh, well, I need a seminary degree to preach the gospel or right. I need to, you know, be uh, a cloistered nun in order to really live into my call, you know? Right. Um, and that's, that's an exercise of somebody's call, but that's yeah. not everybody's call. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Um, and I think that that's one of the important things to highlight as, um, I can see, I can begin to see why he's in, 
kind of influential with young people because yes. you know playing pool and climbing <laughs> mountains and smoking pipes like that's right. great <laughs> that's like right. all this this so it sounds like some, like somebody I want to hang out with like I want to go out oh, and yeah. like, you know play pool with him. Oh, yeah. every, <laughs> you know? every, every time I read about him look at photos of him I'm just like I just want to grab a beer with him yeah just he just seems like the coolest dude yeah yeah um so okay so he died young um well, thousands of, of homeless showed up to his funeral yeah um you mentioned that the the Italian aristocracy like didn't show up, right? Um, I don't think they did. Okay. I, I don't remember they could have, but that's who his family was expecting mm. to come to the Turin Cathedral. But right. that it was the homeless instead, and again they were absolutely shocked. Yeah. Comple- they had no idea he'd been doing all this. Just and I, I would say really exemplifying, uh, exemplifying. Excuse me. Not just the beatitudes of blessed are the poor, you know, all these things. But also, do not let your right hand know what your left is doing. Yeah. Or I think it's the other way around. But, yeah. yeah. But just so keeping it a secret, yet so letting his light shine on yeah. the world. And, yeah. You know, these two things that seem very contradictory, he was able to live out so beautifully. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, how did his canoniz- canonization process go? Like, when, mm. when did it start? Like, yeah. It started... I think pretty quickly after his death, because people who had known him were saying, he, he is a saint. Mm. So I think the process was open pretty quickly. Although I do know at one point, I think it was after he was beatified in 1990, there was, no, it, I, it was either before or after, I can't remember, was there was a hiccup where someone accused him of when he would go into the mountains of going in um, questionable company. Mm. So someone was slandering his good name, but his sister, Luciana, who was really she wrote a biography of him they were as far as i know extremely close Mm -hmm. um she was really instrumental of getting him known and she was just that is not my brother this is slander this is all Mm. this so that put a delay on his beatification and he hasn't been fully canonized yet he's still at the level of beatified but he's still if you've been beatified it's recognized you are among the communion of saints okay okay so in the time we have left like talk about the beatification and right. canonization what's the difference so there are four stages to be recognized as a saint in the catholic church so your first if your cause for canonization is open you're declared a servant of god that's basically said we've collected enough information about your life uh we're looking into you to be investigated um then if someone they do in-depth research. They interview people they knew. They look at their writings if they left any behind. They research their life very, very scrupulously. And if they, I don't want to say pass all the tests, but <laughs> right, right. If if it's seen they lived a good, virtuous, holy life, they're declared venerable, which is mm. kind of I think it's usually called like a declaration of heroic virtue. Okay. Of saying they were radically dedicated to Christ. So then. What is then needed to raise someone to the level of canonization is two approved miracles through their intercession. Okay. So when someone has been beatified, they're saying, okay, one miracle has happened through their intercession. It's been proven. It's miraculous. Science can't explain it. So then they're then beatified, declared blessed. One more miracle is needed, approved for them to be canonized. Oh, uh, okay. So that's why he's blessed as opposed right. to saint. Right. Got it. Okay. Right. Hopefully okay. he will be, I'm certain he will be raised to saint one day, but. Okay. Day has not quite come yet. Sure, so. sure. Okay. So, beatification is one miracle, one proved miracle. Yeah. Sainthood is two yeah. or more. Right. Okay, got it. Usually, yeah. once they have the second one, though, they will go ahead and canonize them. Okay. So. All right. So, st- tell me his name one more time. Slow. Blessed, Blessed Pierre, Pierre Giorgio, Giorgio Frassati. Frassati. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll try to remember that. <laughs> but... Okay, cool. Well, thank you for sharing. Um, so next week we are going to be wrapping up our series with Summer in the, with the Saints, which personally I'm kind of not looking forward to because I feel like we could go on and on and on for, for a while. Oh, but yeah. uh, to kind of end this series, uh, what saint are you going to talk to us about? Francis of Assisi. Francis of Assisi. Nice. My, my personal favorite one. <laughs> um, I, I have stories of Assisi, but I'll share next week. <laughs> but... Um, Yeah, so thanks again for joining us for this week's episode of Thursday's Theology. My name is Jeff. I'm your host. You've been listening to our good friend Jake as a guest star. And uh, remember, theology doesn't always have to be difficult. It is simply the study of who God is. Take care. We'll see you next week.